I'm afraid I will not be able to report um, um, such good examples as the ones that have preceded me. Um, um, my topic is a little bit different and not to bring in uh, the experience of my own university, but I have been uh, looking at um, the situation in, uh, in Italy and um, I have tried to do an overview uh, of the teaching of digital archaeology in Italy and it is not that it was not very easy in some cases because uh, I must report that the um, websites of the Italian University very often are not very useful in finding out the information and I see some Italian colleagues here that are nodding and are <laughs> approving what I'm saying uh, so it is, uh, it is quite complicated and as you might have noticed when Till at the beginning was showing a map of all the results of the survey, you might have noticed that Italy was one of the, uh, how do you call them, southern European countries that did not really reply. And we have several departments of uh, archaeology in Italy, but apparently none of them um, provided answers um, for uh, this survey, including my own. <laughs> So uh, it is a little bit differ difficult to give a complete overview just because I'm missing some data so I've not been able to put together uh, graphs as the ones that we have seen in the introductory um, speeches. So um, what uh, I would like also to report and this comes also to the uh, previous um, uh, presentation is that uh, some uh, countries like Italy or France or Greece that have a very traditional curricula in terms of teaching archaeology have been struggling really a lot in the past years to uh, bring to a new level, to make a more modern, let's say, the archaeological curriculum. And this effort has been particularly hard in, in Italy uh, because uh, we are not really um, uh, into let's call it modern archaeology in a sense. What I want to say is that we have a very traditional type of curricula and uh, in, in Italy it's much easier that you get out of a program in archaeology knowing how to read uh, you know, uh, coins, Greek coins, uh, and you're able to translate Greek without a dictionary, but uh, you very likely have not done one single course on uh, theory of archaeology. So the type of students that we have coming out of an undergraduate degree, and this is not always the same, of course, because we have several departments and several universities and each of them is different. But the, the general trend is that our students um, have the same sort of knowledge when they get out of a, a bachelor degree, the same kind of knowledge that their parents had, for example, 20, 30 years before. So there is this big struggle in this moment uh, where we are trying to change a little bit our curricula because uh, younger generation of researchers are seeing the difficulties that our students have like coming into conferences like uh, computer applications in archaeology because they don't have the skills, the same skills that other students in Europe are being given. And we have also a structural problem in the sense that our bachelor degrees and the master degrees are really strictly regulated by the government. So uh, to activate, to start any new course in Italy requires, a, first of all, a really lengthy internal approval uh, uh, path, which is also followed by approval from our ministry. And uh, to activate an entire bachelor program, like the examples that we have seen before from Leiden, it's even much harder because it's almost impossible. Basically, the the archaeologists or the, 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 the teachers in general, professors, just uh, surrender and don't even try to do it because it's so lengthy, so long, uh, and you need so many documents so that the, most of the people would stop even before. We have a little bit more flexibility within master degrees that we call specialist degrees and um, I'll tell you something about this later. Uh, we have more freedom, more flexibility, so it's easier actually to have this, star, this type of courses in digital archaeology, for example, at a later stage, but uh, you don't have it very often at the bachelor stage, and just, uh, stage, just because it's very hard to be able to, um, to, be able to uh, activate this kind of, of courses. 
So uh, what we are seeing uh, that uh, you know um, these all these uh, new technologies uh, are really profoundly changing um, the way um, professionals and academics approach archaeological work. But this change in Italy is absolutely not reflecting most of the time in the teaching practices, and it has also very very minimal influences in in the university curricula. And as I said, there are a few virtuous examples of courses that exist of universities that are really trying to push toward bringing in uh, digital archaeology in, uh, in in their course in their curricula. But these are really a, a minority. And uh, from one side, as I said, this depends a lot from the bureaucratic difficulties that are encountered in Italy when you try to change the state standardized curricula. But from the other side, it's important also to state that there is a certain resistance, um, I'm, I'm afraid, in including this type of topics within a traditional uh, curricula from a certain type of academia and where, where we have, let's say, older colleagues that are a bit scared of digital technologies because they don't handle them, they don't know them, they, they don't know what to do with them. And in this, uh, for this reason, they uh, very often uh, try to basically ban them or limit them as much as possible. And uh, so very often you don't have any course at all. You just uh, are able to activate uh, labs or you can invite the guests and have seminars and have labs. But it's much harder to have a complete course where the students can learn really something um, that can be then used for their own research. So the outcome is that uh, we have uh, the skills and the competencies of the Italian students uh, are very different uh, depending from where they have studied. So uh, if they studied in one type of uni in one university, will come up with certain skills. They, if they study in a more traditional one, they will not have at all these type of skills. And so this makes also a big difference between the students that are able to be absorbed by the job market and the ones that are not. Because the job market, when we speak about professional archaeology, we can see that they, um, the market is uh, eager and even more and more eager to hire people that are computer skilled. Um, generally speaking, it's mainly GIS related skills because most of them work, uh, professional work, uh, archaeologists work in supporting infrastructure creations, so they do uh, preventive archaeology and they check landscape or areas where there is going to be some sort of construction. So the GIS skills are the most requested one. But uh, I, I can see from my own personal experience, I had many students coming back to me years after telling me I got to that job just because I had there were better candidates, but I knew how to do GIS. So. This creates really a big difference between the student and that also make, uh, you know, compels some students that are interested or are more focused on these kind of topics to move uh, to other university in order to get the skills that the university where he is or she is in is not able to provide. The alternative, um, because of this lack in most cases of digital archaeology courses, the alternatives are often expensive postgraduate level intensive courses or programs or even worse, they are like private courses that uh, you know, ask for a lot of money, provide very basic skills and no theory whatsoever because they are normally not organized or just uh, in part organized by academics. So the theoretical part is completely missing and they get skills like how to scan in 3D a cup or how to use the main tools in uh, RPGIS. So these kind of tools do not provide what is like the theoretical framework within which an archaeologist should be working, but just the skills that are needed to make uh, a, a GIS work, basically. Um, coming to academia and what academia offers, um, I, I was uh, very pleased to see the Leiden um, example where the students are actually able to choose between many courses. Uh, we don't have that. We have either zero or one course in digital archaeology normally. And again, there are a few cases where you know, there is a little bit more choice, but the majority of the university offering something that is related to digital archaeology uh, will have one course at best. 
and there are no minors or secondary sort of path that a student can um, take in order to improve this skill. So the skill, uh, the, the type of offer is limited to one course and uh, uh, the best case scenario, uh, this single course cover broadly the field of digital archaeology and uh, it's sometimes integrated with some labs. Sometimes these labs are very active, so they provide the systematically activities so that the students can, make, they might not be having an entire course, but they can be involved in the activities of labs and uh, learn on the job, basically. Or they are very active in uh, organizing workshops and calling um, colleagues from other, um, from other countries, for example, that can bring in their own experience. Most of the time, they are, um, digital archaeology comes, at, as I said, at the master level, so we are really limited in that. So students that uh, are uh, at bachelor level don't get this type of skills. Um, sometimes they are not even full courses, they are what we call aggregated, uh, what we have, uh, they are aggregated credits. So basically you have to take two labs in order to get uh, the credit that would be equivalent to one of a, of a core, of, an, uh, of another course. And uh, these courses are also very often appearing and disappearing from the overall program because, you know, for a number of years they might be deactivating and then reactivating. So there is no continuity. Um, the survey I did was related mainly to um, specific uh, courses, the ones that uh, are within a specific program, not to these labs. Um, there are a little bit more than the ones I have listed here. These are just uh, four that I have uh, used uh, as an example. So we have courses that vary as um, um, also in the situation of Leiden. We'll see, of course, the courses are very much depending on the type of expertise of the lecturers. So we have the University of Pisa and we have here Gabriele, that is a representative, um, where the course is related to his own skills. So as far as I was able to get from the, um, the website, that they are more based on life cycle and methodological approaches to archaeological data production, management and dissemination. While, for example, in the same region, University of Siena is more uh, oriented to photogrammetry, remote sensing, geophysics, and that comes, of course, from the skills of the lecture. In South Italy, we have more courses um, related to 3D applications. In my own university in Venice, we have two split uh, labs, so one more oriented on photogrammetry and technical survey, and more on landscape studies, depending, again, from who is teaching. So these um, courses, uh, uh, again, um, are not part of stable curricula, so sometimes they run, sometimes they don't. The outcomes are uh, unfortunately a big fragmentation in the kind of education that the student in Italy can get in terms of digital archaeology. Um, there is a very limited access for students in uh, uh, learning something in the domain of uh, digital archaeology with the consequent migration from one university to the other, going to university that can offer better programs. And um, uh, very often students or ex-students have to invest their own money, personal money, in going into uh, specialized courses or postgrad certification uh, where they learn uh, normally very technical skills specifically for one type of digital archaeology like 3D, 3D printing and or drones, drones. It's in this moment very popular. And I finish with that. So uh, just one word. So if the initial question was if it's a reality of utopia, I'm afraid that for Italy I still have to report that we are still on the utopia side. But we hope that in the next years uh, also, with the help of other colleagues working in digital archaeology, we can create a little bit of critical mass that can push uh, the ministry also to change the curriculum and help us to integrate more our courses with digital archaeology. Thank you.